welcome everyone who joins us for this conversation, um, all clients and employees of the Groof Peterkam. This conversation is part of a series of events to celebrate the 150th anniversary of the Groof Peterkam. And being more than a bank, the Groof Peterkam supports innovation, puts its shoulders under entrepreneurship, is forward looking and aims at uh, sustainable investments. And not so much looking back at the past, but uh, the Groof Peterkam wants to keep an eye on the future. And we'd like to inspire you with uh, this conversation between two people who both support young people to take their future in their own hands. And I welcome uh, Beatrice de Mailleux, expert on growth strategy and innovation for young entrepreneurs and uh, social entrepreneur, strategic advisor, um, founder of Capital, uh, Hassan Al Hilu. Welcome both of you. And I just want to tell that uh, Hassan is not joining us physically. Um, he has recently been tested positive on COVID, but uh, so unfortunately he's not here. But fortunately, he is. Uh, we have a digital solution for that. Okay, let's start. Uh, Beatrice, you have a long track record from Microsoft over monitoring startups to becoming CEO of CoStation. Um, what is the thread that runs? through your career? Um, I think the main, and, and I when I received some questions, you know, to prepare the interview, mm. um, what really immediately came up to me was passion. I think from, uh, from uh, the beginning of my, my career, uh, it's really passion and curiosity. I'm really driven, I think, by uh, curiosity of discovering, uh, of learning, of um, discovering lots of different people, different domains, um, and, and the passion that's, that drives me also through all these discoveries of different domains and different people. So indeed, I, I, I had a part of my career in technology. Mm -hmm. I also created uh, a wine company now recently, uh, just out of passion because okay. of winemakers. So it's totally <laughs> different, I know, but I, th I really think for me, it's a uh, curiosity and passion. And I have, you know, every morning when I wake up, I have to be passionate about a lot of things, a bit of bulimia of, of also curiosity of <laughs> discovering. <laughs> But uh, I like my life like it is. So it's, uh, yeah, it's really that I think the reds. Okay, yeah. so passion and curiosity. Now, Hassan, I think passion is also uh, your part because you became an entrepreneur at the age of 15. Now that's extraordinary. Tell us more. So it was really easy. At that time, uh, I needed money. I was growing up in uh, Monenbeek and uh, we were financial poor. And so I was searching a way to earn money. Uh, a student job was not possible as I needed to be 16. But uh, even uh, at the age of 16 in Brussels, you don't really find a student job. So the only way out to become more financial independence and to not to finish like the friends around me in the quartier uh, as drug dealers or illegal or business uh, people, it was to become an entrepreneur. And what easier than to start an own uh, startup a technological uh, startup. And then later, um, when I did earn the money, um, it became also the purpose and the passion uh, that I followed. Mm -hmm. But you, 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 you tell us as if it's so easy to become an entrepreneur. Yeah, it's, um, I think it's the easiest way out at that age, because at an, uh, as, as an entrepreneur, you you could just follow your own, uh, um, let us say, rules. You don't need to follow someone other's rules. And it was also just finding out an idea and um, planning it and making it possible. Um, and so it was easy for me at that age uh, because it was also the only thing that I had. Okay. Were there no obstacles then to overcome? I think like what I always uh, say and what I wrote in my book, uh, Ik ben Hassan, um, is that there were possibly some obstacles uh, in front of me, but um, I always was looking to the positive side of everything. For example, once I was invited in a big summit at the age of 16, a uh, technological summit, uh, to talk about my startup. And then uh, someone, a big mentor or a big CEO was saying, oh, oh yeah, but you're young. And then my response was always like, yeah, but because I'm young, I could run this uh, startup and have this ID. So I was always looking to the positive side of uh, everything and enjoying time. Mm 
Okay, so it gave you some freedom, I understand. Now, you know uh, Beatrice and you have worked together in the past. What is the connection between you two? I think uh, the connection between me and Beatrice is the positive energy uh, that we have uh, and also the way how we look forward uh, towards uh, change and uh, uh, and evolution. Um, and I think um, I was always been surrounded by great mentors, even because I'm still young, uh, by great mentors and great people that are uh, much, much ex more experienced than me. And uh, what is always in cooperation with everyone that uh, has been uh, in my surrounding is that they have this positive energy and let us say they don't complain. And that is uh, how why I like uh, Beatrice, uh, because of her energy and the way how she looks forwards. Okay. Do you agree, Beatrice? Uh, very nice words. Thank you, Hassan. And, and, and I couldn't agree more. And I like the fact what he says about mentors. I strongly believe in the fact that when you have, you know, when you're a bit older like me and, and more, you know, background in the career, it's very important also to be mentored by young people. Oh, so, so the other way around. Yeah, mentorship should really go in both directions. And I have a lot of things to learn every day and especially from young people also on how they see, how they look to the world, how they see the future, what can we learn from them and how can we also be inspired from uh, how they see the future also. So for me, really, that mentorship is very rich on both sides. It's uh, it's not only looking you know, to people with more background and more career. No, I really want to learn and I want to be inspired and mentored also by young people. Yes, but uh, what can you give an example what, for instance, can you learn from someone who is very young with a startup? Oh, it's, it's maybe difficult to really say one specific thing, but it's really the way how they see the future. And there is, uh, you know, there is no secret that the way that I see it, um, it's totally different than the way that see the, the way that they see it, the way that they live it. How do they see a future possible for them? Are um, you a senior impeded by some? Things you already seen, done, know? Yeah, sometimes I think more senior people can have that percept the, the yeah. perception of, yeah, you know, been there, done that, or, you know, sometimes be a little bit more afraid of taking risks or mm -hmm. of, of changing directions or of rethinking some things. And young people can say, you know, whatever, let's just do it. <laughs> I have a son that has the age of a son and, and he's traveling around the world now. And he's like, I don't know, I will see what I will do in September. Well, of course, as a parent, I'm, yeah. I'm quite afraid, but at the other <laughs> side, I've so something like, you know, it's his future. Let me also give him that chance to work for it, but also to travel and to see where the future will leave him. As I think that the subject also, like Hassan said, of that purpose, and you have really to do what's in, in, in your will to do, in, in something that you can do it. And, and if you have, you know, that, that passion and be surrounded by the good people, you just have to go for it. Mm -hmm. Hassan, you say that uh, tomorrow is not a continuation of today. Tomorrow is more diverse. Can you explain that? Yeah, I think if you look uh, to the global level, uh, the, di the diversity that we are seeing on global level is huge. It's largely uh, when you go to cities like uh, Brussels, uh, Antwerp, uh, Charleroi, and more in Belgium, it's been called the majority minority cities. What means is that the majority that lives in those cities exist of minorities together. If you go today to a college or to a university or just to a kindergarten, you will see a totally different reality than what you maybe see in your own company. The diversity that you see in those schools is not being reflected in your company. And so when I'm talking about um, the fact that uh, tomorrow is not uh, uh, like today, it's a fact that uh, we will become more diverse than ever. Mm -hmm. Can you, for instance, say that the, the board of a company does not reflect reality in this sense? It's not even the board, because uh, we often only focus on the board, what's also important, of course. Uh, but it's about a board uh, or a table. Uh, it's just a table of a marketing department or a human research department or the finance department. All those tables are not uh, diverse or still not uh, diverse enough. Uh, I truly believe in that step by step we will uh, reach that, but uh, we should be sure to focus on it and um, uh, go on the wave uh, or surf on the wave of those talents or otherwise uh, companies will break down. Mm -hmm. I uh, read somewhere, Hassan, that you uh, say that diversity is like a hairy monster. 
everyone is afraid. <laughs> How do you um, convince uh, a company to, to be diversity proof? Yeah. That's a good one. That's an old one. <laughs> uh, even I, uh, that's a, that's that's a good one. Uh, you're a good journalist. Um, no, so how do I convince them? Uh, somehow I don't really need to convince them because they uh, already contact me, so they're already convinced uh, in diversity and they want to do something with it, and then they call me uh, or contact me. But uh, what I truly do is uh, focus on empowerment. What means is that I'm not coming as an external just to give them advices or uh, to say to them how to restructure. What I'm doing is uh, really uh, talking with the people, talking with the employees uh, from an empowered perspective to see, okay, how do everyone uh, in this company looks too diverse and how could we make them more inclusive? So when we prepare the company itself to become more inclusive, then we could also welcome external diversity to enter in this uh, company. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Beatrice, apart from diversity, uh, a sense of purpose is important, a mm -hmm. uh, factor to stay relevant as a company. How would you uh, describe purpose-driven entrepreneurship and, and why is it so important? Yeah. Um, well, maybe just on uh, before jumping into the purpose, um, I yeah. think it's important also to just leverage what Hassan said mm -hmm. uh, when you speak about diversity. Uh, there is one thing for sure is companies that have or that embrace diversity, they will be much more or um, they have a better uh, innovative uh, or better also to generate innovation within mm -hmm. the company because diversity will create different point of views within different um, impressions and point of views within a company. Because Conflict you have so maybe. Conflict also, and it's very well known also that conflict will create innovation because when uh, you have a group of, of individuals and they don't all agree about mm -hmm. the same thing, you will find a compromise, you will innovate to find better and newer ways to do something. So diversity can create and will create also sometimes conflicts, but it will generate also innovation. Now, on your um, question of purpose, um, it's also, uh, you can see that in times of crisis like now, um, companies and entrepreneurs that have a strong purpose are also much more resilient uh, to go through difficult times like we are having now. Um, a company um, should have a clear direction, mm -hmm. should have strong values, of course, should have um, a clear mission or vision, and in which also, of course, the whole purpose of the company should be woven into. And then you can also let the individuals do what they have to do also on, on their way of working to achieve these goals and to achieve the direction that the company uh, wants to go through. Um, and I think it's the same also for entrepreneurship. Uh, you can really be, um, be well aware aware on what is the purpose, what is the, 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 the impact that you would like to have on society also. As an entrepreneur, uh, try to, to, to keep an eye on what you want to achieve and what impact you want to have, to, to, to have in society also. And when you keep that also as a very strong direction, I think it's, 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 it's helping you also to go through the crises that you can have as an entrepreneur, because being an entrepreneur is certainly very difficult, uh, but so if you can have have a purpose that is strongly linked to yourself and that that you strongly believe in and you will see these are the entrepreneurs that will make it because they are close to the purpose that they have decided to 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 to, to keep in their everyday uh, uh, doing and in their everyday business and I think uh, otherwise entrepreneurship will be much too difficult to keep as a day-to-day -day, uh, if you don't have a purpose that is really strongly linked to the impact that you want to have and to your own uh, okay. yeah, goal that you want to have on this yeah, uh -huh. number of years that you're living on Earth. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hassan, do you have the same idea on purpose and entrepreneurship? Yeah, I think uh, me and Beatrice uh, we're always uh, a knick yes uh, to each other, uh, as what she says is, uh, I totally agree with it. And uh, again, um, uh, there is one important point that we should put uh, forward when we also talk about purpose is that uh, often the purpose is also a uh, terminology that we only could use when we are in a more luxury position. Um, for example, as a company uh, that is uh, already in an, a better position, then they say, okay, let's focus on purpose. But the real question that we should focus on or the uh, 
the real main problems that we should focus on is how to make um, purpose more, um, uh, having more equi 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 equity in purpose for everyone, uh, that every youngster and uh, every child could have a purpose in their own life and not only ch uh, children's or youngsters uh, that grew up in a better uh, env uh, environment. So that's the only uh, takeaway that I also want to share when we talk about purpose. Mm -hmm. Hassan, I always, uh, also want to ask you uh, to tell some more about capital. What What is that about? So capital is a new organization in the centrum of Brussels where we want to um, help youngsters become more uh, financial independence, what means and more vulnerable youngsters become more uh, financial independence, meaning that we help the youngsters in really reaching a job or reaching a company. But how we do that is not by creating our own new uh, uh, trajectories, but by using what already exists in Brussels, uh, using the great NGOs and uh, companies that exist in Brussels. We just leverage it, make it clear for the youngsters and bring it uh, towards the youngsters. It's a new organization um, that we are developing step by step. Mm -hmm. But of course, the challenge is to get the young people there. Yeah, that is uh, that's a, a less a challenge uh, to be honest because uh, we have a large building in the centrum of Brussels mm -hmm. uh, that's really accessible, uh, and we have also great channels of uh, ways how to recruit youngsters or to let youngsters enter inside our own building. Uh, the real challenge is not really uh, letting the youngsters enter the building and being uh, developed. The real challenge is that we find enough people to develop the youngsters uh, in becoming more financial independence. Mm -hmm. uh, Beatrice, are there projects in which you work together at uh, this moment now? Not, uh, not immediately uh, for the moment, but I'm quite uh, uh, involved in a certain number of projects uh, focused on digital inclusion mm -hmm. um, together with some associations in Brussels. So I, I, I'm uh, well involved in, <laughs> in, uh, in uh, uh, non-profit associations of digital inclusion because I think uh, today, we, for us, it's quite normal to say, OK, I work from home. But for a lot of people, it's so, and for students yeah. and for children and for entrepreneurs and for uh, people having a, a, a shop or whatever, it's very, very difficult now all of a sudden to do everything by digital. So we should be very, very careful and, and watching out on these people to keep them on board and not making, you know, that the, the cloth uh, even bigger between yeah. people that, that, um, that uh, yeah, are, are digital savvy and the yes. other ones. Yeah. Okay. Um, Beatrice, what is the key takeaway you would like our audience to remember from this conversation? Ha, I would like to say, Hassan, is to... Um, Surround yourself with the good people and really um, be very grateful for all the people that can help you. So give help, but also dare to ask help. And I do the same. And really sometimes I just send a mail to someone. I say, do you have half an hour because I'm in doubt. I don't know in what direction I should go. I have enough of it. So how can I change maybe something? So surround yourself by the good people at whatever stage or age you are. And, and people like to help, mm -hmm. and you can also help. So it's a matter of giving and sometimes also a matter of taking the help that people want to propose you. Okay, that's an important message. Hassan, what is uh, your key takeaway? For me personally, what I do like in those kind of discussion is the cross-generational uh, discussion that we talk from different perspectives of generation, but also with the same goal, the same purpose. So uh, my takeaway is let's generate more of those cross-generational talks. Okay, thank you, and thank you, Hassan, uh, for joining us. I know you're not feeling that well, but uh, I hope the best uh, for you so you can uh, overcome this uh, virus uh, quickly. Thank you very much, and thank you, Beatrice, uh, too, for uh, joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Hassan. And then thank you for the audience, the viewers and listeners, for uh, joining us for this uh, conversation, and I hope to see you soon. Bye. Thank you.